Okay, summer is over. Welcome back to Case of the Week. This is an emission H&P that contains 144 words. To figure out what it's worth, we need to take apart the history, the exam, and the medical decision-making and plug that information into this table, which shows the documentation requirements for admission H&Ps. And we're going to take the note apart using both the 1995 and 1997 E&M guidelines. Looking at the history, this is the table we use to figure out what level of history has been recorded. The rules are somewhat different for the 95 versus the 97 E&M guidelines. First, we do have a valid chief complaint. The next step is to check the HPI. Looking at the HPI, we see we've documented at least four HPI elements, duration, timing, severity, and location. This means this HPI qualifies as an extended HPI using both the 95 and the 1997 E&M guidelines. The next step is to check the PFSH. Looking at the PFSH, the rules are the same for the 95 and 97 E&M guidelines. Here we see we have included at least one element of past medical, social, and family history. Therefore, we have three out of three components of PFSH. The next step is to check the ROS. Looking at the ROS, here we have commented on three systems and then used the accepted shortcut, all other systems reviewed and are negative. Therefore, we qualify for a complete ROS using both the 95 and the 1997 E&M guidelines. Putting it all together and looking at the 95 guidelines first, we have an extended HPI, three out of three components of PFSH, and a complete ROS. Therefore, we have a comprehensive history. Looking at the 97 guidelines, we also have an extended HPI, three out of three components of PFSH, and a complete ROS. So we also, using the 97 guidelines, have a comprehensive history. So now the first key component is known. Using both the 1995 and 1997 ENM guidelines, we have a comprehensive history. The next step is to check the physical exam. Looking at the physical exam, remember, the rules are quite different between the 1995 versus 1997 ENM guidelines. First, let's see how the exam stacks up using the 1995 guidelines. Here we see we have included information from at least eight organ systems. That means that using the 95 guidelines, this qualifies as a comprehensive physical exam. The next step is to check the exam using the 97 guidelines. Remember, the 1997 exam is based on the documentation of specific bullets. Looking at this exam as documented, we see that it contains only nine bullets. That means that we would only qualify for an EPF exam using the 1997 E&M guidelines. So using the 97 guidelines, we have an EPF exam, whereas using the 95 guidelines, we have a comprehensive exam. So going back to our documentation grid, now we know we have a comprehensive exam using the 95 guidelines and only an EPF exam using the 97 guidelines. The next step is to check the medical decision making. Looking at the medical decision making and starting with the problem points, here we have two problems. We get three points for the pancreatitis, which is a new problem for which no further workup is described, and one point for the self-limited or minor problem of the metabolic acidosis. This gives us a total of four problem points. The next step is to check the data points. Looking at the data points, we get one point for reviewing labs, two points for eyeballing the EKG, and one point for reviewing the x-ray report. This gives us a total of four data points. The next step is to stratify the level of risk. Looking at the risk, it might surprise you that the use of IV PRN Dilaudid automatically qualifies this encounter as being of high risk. So two out of three dimensions are needed, but in this case all three dimensions add up to high complexity medical decision making. Going back to our documentation grid, remember using both the 95 and 97 guidelines we had a comprehensive history. The 95 guidelines gave us a comprehensive exam, whereas using the 97 guidelines, we only have an EPF exam. In both cases, we have high complexity medical decision making. Remember, for these encounters, three out of three key components are needed. So here we would throw out the 97 guidelines and use the 95 guidelines. And the final level of care would be the 99223 level of care, otherwise known as a level three admission H&P. So putting it all together, here's our note. 
Remember, for these encounters, all three key components are needed. And here, using the 95 guidelines, we have a comprehensive history, a comprehensive physical exam, and high-complexity medical decision-making. So here it took us 144 words to earn $194, which works out to $1.35 per word, which is pretty efficient documentation. If you want to learn how to take apart a note like this, consider signing up for one of our web-based DNM coding curriculums. We offer several different subscription options to match any practice pattern. We also have a coder curriculum, which includes up to 33 AAPC CEUs for only $99. If you need E&M coding education from multiple providers, ask about an E&M compliance web portal, which provides trackable and verifiable E&M coding education for multiple doctors.